just next door, in an even smaller nest, the female reed warbler incubates its four eggs. One of the brood is starting to hatch. However, it is not the young reed warbler. Two weeks ago, a female cuckoo, unseen by the reed warbler, dropped her egg into this nest. Now the young cuckoo hatches. As the first of the brood, the reed warbler did not notice the trick and now feeds the young as if it were its own. The young cuckoo needs to throw the other eggs out of the nest. If it doesn't do this, then the parents will not be able to feed all the nestlings. But the first attempts are not successful. The cuckoo is still too weak. It tries again. It must push the egg above the edge of the nest. It is a big effort. The determination of the weak cuckoo nesting to get rid of the competition is amazing to see. After a few hours, it has another go. This time, there's some success. The first egg landed in the water. When it throws out the second egg, the cuckoo almost follows it out of the nest itself. Now, for the last one. Alone at last. The ever open bright red beak and the constant peeping from the cuckoo prompts the reed warblers to bring it food without a break. Now all the insects and spiders end up in its beak. With such intensive feeding, the it is so large that when it sits on the nest it must hold tight so it doesn't fall off. In a strong wind, the nest may even break apart under its weight. Although the cuckoo is by now much bigger than the reed warblers, they still treat it as if it's one of their own nestlings. Even after it has left the nest, they will still feed it. At the end of August, the young cuckoo will start its lonely journey to Africa. It will return next spring, maybe even to the same reed bed, and try to toss an egg into a reed warbler's nest.